Okay, uh, <coughs> let's continue the discussion. Uh, now we are going to talk about uh, prob uh, theorem 2.5. Hurwitz. Theorem. So Hurwitz theorem says that the relation between the zeros of Fn and the zeros of the limit F the number of zeros, okay? So let's see, first, let G be a region. And suppose that the sequence Fn in the set of all analytic functions G converges to F. So we have a convergent sequence with the limit. And if F is not constantly zero, and also if the closed disk centered at A with radius capital R is totally contained in G, and f of z is not equal to zero for, for every z from the circle, okay? So you have g, you have a, a radius r, and the z is here, z is on the, on the circle. On the circle, f of z, the limit, is never equal to zero. If this happens, then there is an integer capital N such that for N greater than or equal to capital N F and Fn have the same number of zeros inside the open disk centered at A with the radius R. All right, so inside this open disk, Fn and F have the same number of zeros. Okay, uh, well, let's see. So how do we get it? We are going to apply the Roche's theorem. So here, we need Roche's theorem. What is a Roche theorem? Roche theorem is the following. Let me recall what the Roche theorem. It is on page 125 in the section of uh, argument principle. In the section of argument principle. Okay, it's a Roche theorem, it's a theorem 3.8. Roche theorem says it is about the meromorphic functions. The function may have the poles. Uh, here is all the uh, the function uh, analytic for the pole. The number of pole will be zero. Okay. So suppose f and g are meromorphic functions. Meromorphic in a neighborhood. of the closed disk centered at A with radius R with no zeros on the circle gamma. Gamma is equal to Z, Z minus A, 
distance is equal to r. Okay, it's a uh, you you will see that this is exactly uh, this uh, the condition exactly cover the condition of uh, Hurwitz theorem. And if z f z g p f p g are the number of zeros inside it is a pose the number of zeros or poles of f and g respectively okay inside gamma counted according to their multiplicities okay so that's a general condition the essential condition is that and if the ops value of f of z plus g of z is strictly than the ops value of f of z plus ops value of g of z. If you put the equal sign, it doesn't make a uh, difference. Uh, it, 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 does, it, it is, does not provide any special condition, right? Because this is triangle inequality if you have an equal sign. The crucial thing is that it has no equal sign. Okay. And this condition only holds on the, on the boundary gamma. If this is correct, then what you can get is the number of zeros minus the number of the poles for f is equal to the number of zeros minus number of the poles for g. So this is a Roche theorem. You get this from the argument principle. All right, it's a Roche theorem. So basically, we are going to verify this condition. This is uh, the crucial condition in the Hurwitz theorem. So we're going to get f, fx, fz, and ff, fn of z with this, uh, with this condition. Okay, remember, fn converges to f. Okay, so this is a recall. So this part, it is a recall. Okay, so f of z is not equal to zero for z minus a, ops value is equal to r. And this is a, a compact set. A function, a continuous function is not equal to zero over the compact set, then the infimum is strictly greater than zero. So it, be careful, I, I want to emphasize this property only holds for compact set, okay? Okay, so the, the infimum will be strictly greater than zero. All right, uh, we're talking about compact set. Compact set, Fn converges to F uniformly. on this uh, compact set. So there is an integer, capital N, such that for all N greater than or equal to capital N and Z minus A distance is equal to r, we have fz minus fn of z will be less than one half of delta. Uh, here, one half is, can be replaced by any smaller positive numbers, one half, one over four, three over four, whatever, okay? And 
remember that delta is the infimum. Of course, one half delta is less than f of z for every z on the circle. And f of z is, of course, less than or equal to f of z ups value plus fn of z ups value. Right? So here you see, that's, that's what I call, you can just pick up whatever smaller positive number. Okay, so what we got, we verify that condition in the Roche theorem. And you will check that all the conditions are corresponding to each other. And then this, by Roche's theorem, F and Fn have the same number of zeros inside the open disk centered at A with radius R for all n greater than or equal to capital N. So in the Roche theorem, it is about a meromorphic function, so you have p, but here this is analytic function. Those p are, are zeros. There's no poles, so it's, it's, that's why you have the, the equality of the numbers of uh, zeros. See? So that's our uh, uh, Hurwitz theorem. And an easy corollary from Hervey's theorem is the following. Sometimes we want to know if the function has zero or not. So the corollary 2.6 says if fn is a sequence in the set of analytic functions over G converges to f in h of g remember h of g is closed okay if it converges it will be an h of g and each fn never vanishes on g never vanishes on g okay then what do you get you see here the theorem of Hurwitz, they have assumption f is not constantly zero. So here we don't have this assumption f, we only have the limit f. So you have two possibilities. f is constantly zero, that's one possibility. The other possibility, or f never vanishes. Why f never vanishes? If f is not constantly zero, then by the Hurwitz theorem, the, the, the f and f w, fn will have the same number of zeros. This condition just says fn cannot have zeros. Right? So f will have no zero. So that's a, that's a, a trivial corollary. It's not uh, surprising. But be careful. If you do not assume f is not constant zero, then this is one possibility. Remember that if f n is just one over n, a constant function, then of course it belongs to whatever h of g, and and it never vanishes, but f n converges to zero in h of g. So this is always a possibility for whatever region. So you have to always exclude or include this situation in the, in the statement. All right? Okay, so next we're going to study a similar theorem like the Asila ascoli theorem in the set of H of G. Asila ascoli Asila a moment, let me, let me, let me make sure I write, okay. Uh, Ascoli Ancela. 
Let's call it Arcella theorem is for the CG omega. In the CG omega, it has a condition called equicontinuity. Okay. Equicontinuity. This is Arcella Ascoli theorem. And now we do not just have CG omega, we have H of G. H of G is a closed subspace of, an, uh, a closed subspace of a, a CG omega. So we want to develop a similar theorem, but with a, a different condition, not equicontinuity. And that is the Montel theorem. Okay, so Montel theorem is the Arcella Ascoli theorem in the CG, uh, in the H of G, in H of G. But we do not use equicontinuity. We have the following definition. Okay, this definition is used to uh, to, to to write down the Montel theorem. So the definition is 2.7. A set F in the H of G is locally bounded if for each point a in G, there is a constant capital M and R greater than zero such that for all F in capital F we have the following condition. The condition says f of z ups value is less than or equal to m for z minus a distance less than r. Okay? So this is a local boundedness for a subset in H of g. So here this z is not just at a, it's in the neighborhood of a. So alternatively, f is locally bounded if there is a radius r greater than zero, such that the supremum of ups value of f of z, z minus a less than r over this uh, on this open disk, oh, sorry. and f belongs to f or f, it is finite. Okay, that's a local boundedness, and the local boundedness is about the uh, the, 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 the all f. Remember, if you have just one F, of course it is locally bounded. If you, this set F has a one or finitely many F, cl clearly it is locally bounded because uh, F is defined at one point and continues at that point, so it, you can always find a small disk. And finitely many, you shrink the disk sufficiently small. So if, it is, if you have infinitely many, clearly F is locally bound. So if capital F contains infinitely many elements, then you may not have the, the minimum among, the, among certain stuff, okay? So that's a, uh, 
So this condition is non-trivial for infinite subset F. Local boundedness, boundedness is non-trivial for infinite subset F. It's really a, a strong condition. Okay. Okay. Uh, you see here, this F, this uh, family F, it is actually the supermum over the open disk is bounded or uniformly bounded. It does not depend on the selection. And this immediately implies this definition implies the uniform boundedness for the family F over contact set in G, right? Because a compact set can be covered by a uh, finite open cover. Remember that a finiteness is important. Whenever you have finiteness, you can always choose a, a, a smaller R. Okay, so that's a dilemma 2.8. A set F in H of G is locally bounded if and only if for each compact set K in G there is a constant M such that the upper value of F of Z is less than or equal to M. Okay, so you always use the definition of uh, open cover has minus sub cover for the compact set, you can get this uh, here for all F in F and Z in K. That's a uniform. If you want, you can write down the proof by yourself to practice uh, the application of a uh, uh, compact set. And the uh, the compact set we didn't we didn't discuss this uh, topological concept a lot, but we use it a lot uh, in in the textbook in the first few section chapters section I think they they have the uh, discussion. Let me find uh, on page twenty. There's a section about compactness, so you can practice. So on page 20, section four, compactness. So all the required or necessary conditions or materials about compact set uh, can be found uh, in this section. So if you're not so familiar with compact set, you can go back to, to review that. Okay, so now we are going to use this local boundedness for the family in the H of G to develop a similar result like the Azela Asicoli theorem. Okay, so that's a uh, theorem 2.9. Monter theorem. Monter theorem. Okay, so a family. F in H of G is normal if and only if F is locally bounded. F 
F is uh, locally bounded. So this is uh, a very nice and clean result. Normal, local bounded, locally bounded. I see the proof. It's there are two directions. First, suppose F is normal, but it's not locally bounded. We prove it by contradiction. Not locally bounded then you can find local bounded means uh, every compact set it is uniformly bounded uniformly bounded and not locally bounded means there is a compact set k in g such that It's not uniformly bounded. Uniformly bounded, where is it? Uni here, this is uniformly bounded. Not uniformly bounded means it's going to be infinity. So the supremum of ops value of f of z, z in k, f in f, the supremum is infinity. This corresponds to the, to the condition not locally bounded. OK. So this implies that there is a sequence, there is a sequence Fn in this family F such that the supremum of ops value of f of n z in k is going to be greater than or equal to n. Actually, you, uh, we actually say it will converge to infinity, right? Or diverge to infinity, whatever word you, you, you like to use. And uh, to make it quantitative, we always say ops value of f of n, the supremum is going to be greater than or equal to n. Right? We can always do this. Uh, why can we always find a sequence of Fn with this property? So the steps will be the following. The steps will be the following. Uh, for each, for n equal to 1, for n is equal to 1, you see, you can find uh, an, a z, find z with a, with a what? With a, da, 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 uh, find a z in k and uh, some index n, uh, f1 in f such that Ups value of f1 of z is greater than z1. It's greater than or equal to 1, right? So you can get this. So, so what you get is that then the corresponding supremum of f1 of a z, z in k, will be greater than or equal to 1. So that's the first one. And then you get for n equal to 2. Uh, for n equal to 2, find another z, z2 in k and f2 in f such that ups value of f2 of z2 is greater than or equal to 2 then the corresponding supremum ups value of f2 of, of z z in k will be greater than or equal to 2 then you continue this there's one small gap there's one small thing you have to make it clear. Why F2 is not F1? If you have F1 all the time, what will happen? The thing is the following. Actually, 
uh, f1 is in h of g f1 is compact uh, f1 is continuous f1 is continuous then uh, f1 is bounded on this compact set k So definitely, there is an integer. There is an integer n such that ops value of f one of z is going to be less than or equal to n for all z in k. So possibly, your f one appears several times but it can never appear infinitely many times. At n step, it will definitely stop because the ops value is going to be less than n. All right? So possibly you, you may have this situation, but eventually you, you will only have finitely possible, possible steps, finitely many possible steps for this. So you don't see the situation F1, 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 F1 forever. That's, that's not going to happen in this selection. And when you have repeated family, you just select the one time, erase the duplicate time, duplicate items, and rename them as F1, F2, F3, F1. All right? So that's uh, the, the way to find, I mean, that's a way to explain this uh, this situation. All right. Okay. Good. So we assume we can find the such thing. Uh, you have you got a sequence. F is normal. We 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 show we assume this is normal. F is normal. The sequence will have a convergent subsequence, and there is. A function f in h of g such that uh, and, and a subsequence and a subsequence f n sub k such that f n sub k converges to f, converges to f. Okay, so we have this. Uh, convergence means it are equivalent to the uniform convergence over the compact set. So this condition implies the convergence implies that the supremum of ops value of f n k of z minus f of z z in k will approach zero as k approaches infinity. This is uniform convergence over arbitrary compact set. Then you get the convergence in the h of g. Okay, it's uniform convergence. And f is, again, f is an analytic function. So f of z, ops value is less than or equal to m for some constant m greater than or equal to z, uh, greater than zero and for all, for all z in, all z in k. Bounded. Every continuous function over compact set is a bounded. Okay, now let's check. F n k of z ops value. Here. It's the supremum. Remember the supremum. We're talking about the supremum. It's going to be greater than or equal to n k. 
and then you use the triangle inequality We use this triangle inequality. We insert minus f of z plus f of z. And it's less than or equal to the supermom z in k, abs value fn of z, fnk of z minus f of z. And this is dominated by capital M. Right? So this works for all k. So let's approach infinity we have the infinity nk will approach infinity infinity is less than or equal to this will approach zero and this is an, a contradiction contradiction right so this will be bigger and bigger here this approach is zero. Remember, we, we had this condition. When k approaches infinity, this difference will approach zero. So infinity will be less than or equal to m. That's a contradiction. OK, so we showed that if f is a normal family, then it has to be locally bounded. Has to be locally bounded. And that's one direction. Now let's prove the other direction. Now. Suppose F is locally bounded. We're going to apply the Asila Ascoli theorem. We are going to apply a Silas Scully theorem. Okay, a Silas Scully theorem has two conditions. Condition one means at one point f of a, ops value is less than or equal, uh, uh, has a compact closure. Compact closure, closure is closed. Compact means you, you only need boundedness. That's exactly the local boundedness. So the k equal to a point a is a compact subset then the f a f in f is compact because because this uh, f a is less than or equal to m for all f in m and for some for some m greater than zero. Every set, if it is bounded, then its closure is going to be compact. This is a bounded set, then closure is compact. Okay, let me write it here. A bounded set. in R, a bounded set in R must have a compact closure. A bounded set in R must have a compact closure. Because a bounded set, you only need the closeness where the closure is closed. OK, so now we are going to prove the second condition, the equicontinuity. So we need to show. that F is equicontinuous at every point, at each point of G, at each point of G. OK, so let A be a point in G, epsilon greater than 0. A in G greater than zero. Uh, A is an interior point. 
interior point, then there exists there is an R greater than zero such that okay let's see what we have the closed disk is contained in G smaller closed disk and f of a z is less than or equal to m for all z in v a little r closure this comes from the local boundedness local boundedness okay and it's f for all f in this family okay so here we use a local boundedness again we use this local boundedness This is R. Now we choose a small, smaller disk. Okay, choose this one. Choose a smaller disk. The radius is one half R. One half R, and F in in this family. Then the the closed uh, the, the the smaller circle gamma of t is going to be a plus r e i t gamma is 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 r it's not this part. Z is inside this uh, smaller disk, and gamma is still here. Gamma is the bigger one. Okay, so T is between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, now we use a Cauchy integral formula, F A minus F of Z. F A minus F of Z. It can be written as 1 over 2 pi I integral gamma fw a minus z w minus a and w minus z dw okay do you still remember how to get this fz is this is fz and F A one over two pi i gamma. Here you just use F A. Ah, oh, sorry. This is Z. This is Z. My bad. Okay. Because this part actually you move f a forward one over two pi i integral that one over the this is equal to one you get this and then you do subtraction you have this one when you after you have this and you move the ops value into the integral okay this is the reason why we have such formula and it is less than or equal to 1 over 2 pi integral gamma uh, fw a minus z w minus a w minus z and dw okay okay let's try to estimate ups value of fw less than m a minus z a minus z a minus uh, w minus a is equal to r w minus z w minus z is greater than or equal to one half r you flip it it is e uh, it's less than or equal to r uh, two over r so you have a uh, R here you have two here and uh, 
the length of this uh, curve, a uh, circle, is a uh, two pi r. Is a two pi r, right? Let me see. Am I right or wrong? Yes, yes, I'm right. So you cancel one. Okay, two pi, two pi cancelled. R, R cancelled. R over two, two over R, and so you will have two M over R, A minus Z. Two, uh, f uh, it's not four M over R. Check that with the textbook. I, based on my computation, it's a two M over R, not a four M over R. If I make a mistake in this estimation, just let me know. I don't think I have a mistake here. W minus W is on the big circle. The radius is R. This one is less than or equal to R over 2. Uh, 2 over R. It's a 2 pi R. Yeah, it's right. OK, anyway. Uh, after we get this, of course, we're going to set it less than epsilon. Set it less than epsilon, you will get A minus Z should be less than R over 2M times epsilon. And be careful, this Z is selected so that it is inside this uh, smaller disk. So let delta smaller than whatever minimum of R over 2 inside it and R over 2M times epsilon. You have to satisfy two conditions. It follows that whenever a minus z distance less than epsilon, the, the delta distance less than delta, we have f a minus f z less than epsilon. You see here, it's for all f in f. This is important. It is uniform. It is uniform. This uniform condition comes from the control of m. This m is already uniform. And this m com comes from the local boundedness. OK? So that's a place you use this local boundedness. Otherwise, for each different one, of course, you can get this m. But that's not uniform. The family F is equicontinuous. And F is uh, normal. Well, we prove the other direction. So we finish the Monterre theorem. The Monterre theorem just says local boundedness is equivalent to the normal for the, for what? For the H of G. Because here, you see here, this proof cannot be applied to C g omega because uh, you apply the Cauchy integral formula. It only works for the analytic functions. Only works for the analytic functions. OK, so after the Monterre theorem, you have an easy corollary. Remember, what is a normal family? Normal family means it has a compact closure. So you take a closure. So a set f in H of G is compact if and only if it is locally bounded, then it is normal. We don't need to take closure and closed. You save the process to take the closure, then it has to be closed. Then if it's closed, then it's compact, right? OK, so this is uh, the easy corollary. Now let's see the exercise. In this section, we can assign some exercise. This exercise is on page 154. 
you can do the exercise one, exercise two. Exercise two, you don't have to do all of them. You just uh, show that the convergence over the, over a uniform convergence over the compact set, that's enough. Okay, so just part. Part of it. Uh, and you can pr try the problem four. Yeah, and that's it. If you have time, you can you can can see the other problem, and those are. Uh, the uh, practice just for the for this section. Okay, uh, we will continue the topic in the next section and uh, next video. Thank you.